Islam. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. As we turn now to Syria, the government crackdown on protesters in Syria has reached a new level of violence, just as prayers ended Monday, the first day of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. At least six people were killed earlier today, pushing the toll to at least 150 over the last two days. An attack on the central city of Hama began on Sunday, when more than 100 people were killed by government forces, continued into Monday with another 24 dead across the country. Syria has banned most foreign journalists, making it hard to verify exactly what's happening there. But the Associated Press said this morning parts of Hama were hit with heavy machine gun fire after sporadic shelling overnight. It said one shell hit a compound known as the Palace of Justice, home to several courts in the city center, causing a huge fire that burned much of the building. Hama has a special significance in Syria. It's the site of a 1982 massacre under President Bashar al-Assad's father, Hafez al-Assad, in which as many as 17,000 to 40,000 Syrian citizens were killed. ABC News reports Secretary Hillary Clinton will meet with a group of Syrian activists and representatives from the Syrian-American community today as the Obama administration tries to develop its policy as President Assad's crackdown intensifies. Meanwhile, addressing a press conference yesterday in Norway, the Turkish foreign minister criticized Syria's crackdown on protesters in Hama. Uh, we strongly condemn this because the timing and the methodology of this operation both were very wrong. The methodology was wrong because uh, of the using tanks and uh, heavy arms in, as, uh, in a city uh, environment is uh, not proper. Uh, the timing one day before Ramadan, which is uh, uh, the, p the month of peace in the Muslim world, uh, was a very wrong signal to the Syrian people, to the Muslim world, and to the, to the, to the uh, global community. Witnesses report the Syrian government has used tanks, artillery and anti-aircraft weapons against protesters. Nearly 1,700 Syrians have reportedly been killed since protests against Assad erupted in March. The European Union said yesterday it's shocked by Syria's use of tanks to storm Hamas Sunday. The EU has increased sanctions against the Syrian regime. This is EU spokesman Michael Mann. We were extremely shocked and appalled by what happened in Hama yesterday. There's never been any justification for what's been going on. You cannot justify attacking civilians who are exercising their right to democratic protest. You just can't send in the tanks and attack them like that. We've condemned it in the strongest possible terms. To find out more, we're going to Paris right now to be joined by Ziad Majid. Lebanon and Syria researcher, assistant professor of Middle Eastern studies at the American University of Paris, also coordinator of the Arab Network for the Study of Democracy, and writes regularly in Arabic and French press. We welcome you to Democracy Now! What is happening in Syria right now? Uh, in Syria, what's happening right now is a popular, peaceful revolution that is being brutally repressed by uh, the uh, regime of Damascus, a regime that is in place since 1963, uh, since the Ba'ath coup d'etat in the country. Uh, when it imposed also the emergency law. In 1970, Hafez al-Assad took over in another coup d'etat within the Ba'ath Party. And then in 2000, for the first time in the history of republics, he uh, gave uh, the presidency to his son, Bashar, who has been in place in, for, for 11 years now. The uh, mentality of the Syrian regime, the structure of its security forces, is only uh, interested and obsessed by security measures uh, and by repressing any political protest, which means there is no political room for negotiations or for reforms, as the regime is pretending. For the last few months now, there have been 2,000 people killed, uh, among them many women, children, and uh, of course lots of men, and there have been more than 10,000 people arrested, uh, 10,000 people uh, refugees, lots of people who disappeared, who were probably kidnapped, sometimes uh, unfortunately killed. So there is a brutality, and there is at the same time a word, silence, or at least condemnation that are not uh, to the level of uh, the challenges that are posed in Syria, whether in relation to human rights, to international law, or even to the minimum of ethics uh, that should prevail in this world. Can you talk about what's happening in Hama and begin by talk about the significance of this city decades ago with uh, President Assad's father? In 1982, uh, there was an uprising uh, in Hama, a popular one, uh, but also the Muslim Brotherhood uh, participated uh, actively to it. And then the Syrian regime response uh, was a brutal destruction of the uh, old part of the city with heavy uh, bombardment. 
uh, and with a massacre against the civil population that led to the death of more than 20,000 people uh, in, in few days. Uh, in addition to that, there were, during the 80s, uh, a wave of terrors, assassinations, arrests, uh, death uh, squads killing and targeting people. Uh, the toll was close to 40,000 people uh, killed. So Hamas symbolically is uh, a place of uh, sadness, of a terrible memory. And at the time, it was the brother of the president uh, who was in charge uh, by his brother, by the president, to uh, commit that massacre. Uh, today, uh, history is repeating itself in a miserable way when also Bashar al-Assad is uh, uh, asking, or uh, his brother, who is the commander of the 4th Division, is also carrying on uh, this massacre. So there is a parallelism in, in, in violence and repression. Uh, but at the same time, this time, uh, there are peaceful demonstrations. We have seen hundreds of thousands of people coming to the streets each Friday with no single act of violence, regardless of all the regime uh, propaganda about armed groups, about Salafists, about uh, uh, conspiracies. And suddenly, uh, the regime decided to punish uh, the city once again, uh, to have a revenge against all these people who went out. Uh, and uh, in the last few days, tens of people were killed, heavy bombardment, and uh, once again, in 82 and today, the international community is either silent or waiting maybe for more blood uh, to react, which I think is, is very sad. And just allow me also to give one example of a terrible event that happened in Hama uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, in Hama, there was a singer, a popular one, who was leading the demonstrations and using his sense of humor, the beautiful Syrian sense of humor, to make fun of the dictator, of his crimes, of his regime. This singer was kidnapped, was killed, and his throat was taken away in a symbol also, again, of the terrible revenge against any freedom aspiration or even against a basic right uh, of uh, freedom of expression. Ziad Majid, could you talk about the significance of this being the beginning of the holy Muslim month of Ramadan? Uh, in, in Ramadan, usually, uh, the, the month is called uh, a month of haram, which is a month where people should uh, be uh, in their uh, mode of life, uh, pious, uh, uh, respectful of many codes, uh, etc. Uh, but more importantly, and regardless of the religious aspect for uh, those who believe in it, uh, the month of Ramadan is supposed to be uh, the month of a huge mobilization. The Syrian activists were preparing each night uh, to go to the streets, to transform each day of the week to a Friday, so that they will accelerate uh, their uh, revolution and uh, their journey towards freedom and towards the full destruction of the wall of fears uh, that the uh, dictators built in Syria. So I think the Syrian regime wanted to send a very strong signal before Ramadan by uh, making this massacre uh, to prevent uh, these kind of mobilizations. And I know also from friends in Syria that there are snipers of the roof, on the roofs of many buildings uh, in many cities in order also to kill people and uh, to uh, make any uh, presence in the street extremely difficult and, and very dangerous. Uh, regardless of that, we have seen yesterday uh, tens of demonstrations in tens of places. Uh, people were in the streets, were still saying that they will support Hama and Deir Zur, another martyr city uh, these days that they will keep uh, their peaceful response to the brutality of the tanks and of the heavy gunfire of uh, Assad's regime. The pictures uh, that are getting out, again, no foreign journalists allowed in Syria, are remarkable. The mass demonstrations in cities like Hama right now. Uh, and I'm looking at the Guardian newspaper blog, The Guardian of Britain, um, and it says 11, 12 a.m. Protesters say they've been taking the SIM cards of those shot dead so that they can talk to each other in media without being tracked. Nur Ali, a pseudonym, reports all phone numbers are registered to the person when they buy it, and several of of those who've been detained say they've been tracked by their phone number for talking to Al Jazeera or other media. There's ever more SIM cards available right now, unfortunately, says one activist in Damascus. Ziad Majed, comment on this. Yeah, uh, this is absolutely true. Uh, I heard it also from lots of uh, people uh, who are still active on the net or on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and are trying to uh, bring the reality of what's happening in Syria, because let's uh, remember that there are no uh, international nor even Arab press present in Syria to cover what's happening. Uh, it's the citizens themselves who are becoming uh, not only 
uh, activists and militants for democracy, but also reporters who are bringing to us the atrocities of what's happening from one side and the exceptional courage of the Syrian people from the other. Uh, let me add to what was said in The Guardian as well, that in many cases, many of the people who were arrested were tortured uh, in order to take their passwords uh, of their accounts, whether they have it on, on their email passwords or their Facebook passwords or, or Twitter or uh, YouTube, etc., in order not only uh, to, to hack the, uh, the account, but also to, uh, to have traps uh, made to, to their friends by contacting them, by giving them appointments. So uh, the imagination of the dictator, even if it's monotonous and it's always about repression and about uh, killing and about uh, de dehumanizing uh, the other, is also a fertile one when it comes to uh, getting uh, information and trying to, at any cost, uh, kill the revolution. Uh, but so far, all these attempts and all this violence and all this brutality uh, is not or did not stop the people from being in the streets and from continuing uh, their uh, revolution.